Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. As I told you yesterday, we will be presenting the issues discussed in the Commission in two stages. Tomorrow, after the midday briefing at 12.45, there will be a press conference with various commissioners in order to look at the question of combating illegal online content, whereas now, immediately, we have our lead negotiator with us in order to present the Article 50 Draft Withdrawal Treaty and then answer a number of questions. But I can also tell you that after Mr. Barnier, there will be a technical briefing. We can easily deal with uh, at the technical briefing that will follow immediately the presentation and the Q&A session by Michel Barnier, to whom I give the floor straight away. Ivan, it's not totally impossible for me to answer to technical questions. Mesdames, Messieurs, je suis très... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to meet you at a very important moment. The College of Commissioners has just approved the draft text for the withdrawal agreement, which I will be presenting to you now. It's also a very important moment for the negotiation. I'm tempted to say a, a, a key moment in this very lengthy and complex process for these extraordinary negotiations which we wish to make a success of. So I'm very happy to be able to present this draft agreement to you, which has just been circulated to every one of you. It contains 168 articles. It's a full draft withdrawal agreement. But I'd like to make three comments before I move on to substance. First of all, if we wish to make a success of these negotiations, and I certainly do, we must pick up the pace. On the 30th of March 2019, in 13 months, 13 months, the United Kingdom will no longer be a member state of the European Union. That is what they wanted. And on that day, for that day, we need to have organized its withdrawal in an orderly fashion. So I think now what we need to do is negotiate on the basis of a text, because time is short between today and the autumn of this year, which is when we need to conclude a final agreement based on this draft withdrawal agreement because, as I always say, we need to allow a certain number of months for ratification. On the European side, the, the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament, of course, but also by the British Parliament. So that is why our choice is to work with and propose to the United Kingdom that we work with a legal text which brings clarity. A second point, this is a draft. And as of this afternoon, we will discuss this with the 27 member states in close contact with the European Parliament. But it is a draft, and we will only officially place it on the negotiating table with the United Kingdom once this work with the 27 member states and the European Parliament has been concluded. Now, I have been committed to transparency throughout the entire negotiating process, and that is why we have just published this draft. That will enable everyone to take stock of the subjects on which we need to reach an agreement with the United Kingdom, but I believe that this transparency is also a very important tool in the public debate on Brexit throughout Europe. As of now, thanks to this text, 
This is a tool based on legal principles, facts and solutions which are concrete and realistic. And I hope that this document will also be of, useful, of use for your work, uh, ladies and gentlemen, journalists. And then a third point, this draft text contains no surprise for our British partners. It expresses in legal terms the commitments jointly entered into by the Union and the United Kingdom in December in the joint report. It includes the positions of the Union which were already known on other withdrawal issues on which we haven't really been able to make any progress since December. It includes the Union position on the governance of the withdrawal agreement and finally it includes the Union position on the transition which is part of the withdrawal agreement because I repeat the only possible legal basis for transition is Article 50. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to develop briefly each of these three points. First, our draft translates into a legal text our joint commitments. Nothing in here will be a surprise for those who have followed the negotiations. The draft text ensures that one, citizens' rights, our priority, will be protected as we had agreed and will be vigilant on the need to keep administrative procedures simple and affordable. Two, all financial commitments undertaken at 28 will be respected by the UK and by the EU. Three, north-south cooperation on the island of Ireland will be protected and our border will be avoided. A few words on Ireland. Our text contains the legal commitments necessary for the protection of the rights of individuals as well as for the protection of the common travel area. These points have been already agreed between the EU and the UK. The withdrawal agreement must also contain a solution to avoid a hard border and to protect the Good Friday Agreement in all its dimensions. This is a joint commitment by the UK and the EU. The joint report lists in paragraph 49 three options for tackling the problem. First, to deal with this through the agreement of the future relationship, if possible. Obviously, obviously, this solution will not be in place at the moment of the withdrawal. Second, the UK committed to proposing specific solutions to address the new unique circumstances on the island of Ireland. We look forward to receiving these proposals. Third, to maintain full alignment with those rules of the internal market and the customs union, which now or in the future support North-South cooperation, the whole island economy, and the protection of the Good Friday Agreement. This is the backstop solution that we have to put in the withdrawal agreement. It is the only way to guarantee that our joint commitments will be upheld in all circumstances as the, jo as the joint report requires. Ladies and gentlemen, we have applied imagination and creativity to find a specific solution to the unique challenge that Brexit poses for the protection of the Good Friday Agreement. Two issues are key to avoid border checks. First, full alignment with the Union law on goods, veterinary and plant health rules. Second, a Northern Ireland has to be covered 
by the Union Customs Court. Our approach is focused on those areas where it is needed to avoid border checks. Daily lives around the border should continue as today. And as I have said before, already today, Northern Ireland has rules in place that are different from the rest of the UK. Let me repeat what I said in my last press conference. We stand by our commitment to discuss all three options set out in the John report in parallel. All these issues on and all, and all of these issues, on behalf of the 27, I will continue the dialogue with the political leaders of Northern Ireland. I will meet Michelle O'Neill and uh, Arlene Forster uh, early next week. Mon deuxième point. Then my second point on the draft agreement after the question of Ireland. Our text also includes our proposals on the other separation issues. Again, there is no surprise because we have translated in legal terms the union positions as expressed in our essential principles papers with which you are familiar. On several of these subjects, negotiations have effectively begun without our yet having reached an agreement at the moment I speak to you. That's the case with Euratom, a very important subject, or for the question of goods placed on the market, and there are others. On other issues for an orderly withdrawal, like intellectual property or public procurement, we have not yet received a proposal for a British position. And so on those points, the negotiations have not been able to start. So on those subjects, in the draft treaty which you have in your hands, we have indicated the European Union positions. We also hope to make progress on the governance of the withdrawal agreement, which is a key issue. There too our position has not changed. We believe that the Court of Justice of the European Union must play a role for the interpretation and implementation of the withdrawal agreement whenever that agreement refers to European law. That is the position that we have put into our draft text with, of course, specific provisions already established in the joint report for the protection of citizens. On all of these important subjects, we hope that our draft text will make it possible for us to make progress more rapidly and speed up negotiations. We have agreed with the British side that we will meet for the whole of next week for a new negotiating round. And then a third point, I would recall that our draft text obviously includes our proposal for the transition period, which has been officially requested by Theresa May on behalf of the British government, and on which the heads of state or government and the European Parliament have given an agreement of principle. Now, on transition, our technical discussions this week have, to be quite honest, confirmed that there are significant divergences, too many divergences on several points, of which I'll mention just two. Citizens' rights, our priority. The United Kingdom still wishes to give different treatment, less favorable treatment, at the end of the transition period to those citizens who arrived in the UK, who arrived during the transition, as opposed to those who arrived before the transition, before the day of withdrawal in March 2019. For us, for the Member States, for the Parliament, this remains a major issue because as far as we are concerned, the full union acquis will apply throughout the transition. 
and it seems reasonable that we should treat citizens arriving before or during in a fair and equal fashion. Uh, I also believe that with our proposal, that should allow the United Kingdom to have a system which would be easier to manage in purely administrative terms. Then a second big point of divergence for the transition is the application of European rules during this short period from March 2019 to the 31st of December 2020. The United Kingdom still asks to be able to oppose a new European rule with which it disagrees and which would enter into force during the transition. We recalled, I repeat, that the rules must be the same for all during that period. We cannot take any risk of regulatory divergence during the transition. So given these problems, these disagreements, I've quoted two, but there are others, I would simply repeat that at this moment, as I speak to you, the transition is not a given. And that is why I think the next round of negotiations is both useful and important. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be now discussing these matters in detail with the Member States already this afternoon in co-repair. Yesterday I had the opportunity of addressing the Ministers at the General Affairs Council and also members of the Parliament Brexit Steering Group yesterday evening. Obviously these discussions must take place with all of the institutions before we officially transmit this document as a draft for negotiations with the United Kingdom. In that way, my hope is that thanks to this document and thanks to the negotiations, we continue to make progress, as I wish, towards an orderly withdrawal from the UK from